This is Star Talk. For about 30, 40 years, we used the classic Drake equation, which said, all right, life evolves in these little places around the galaxy, and that's all we have to calculate. But then it was pointed out that interstellar travel is not impossible, certainly not with robots that might co copy themselves. Um, and probably colonization of some kind or another is possible, in which case you're, not, you're talking about more like spreading zones. And how long would it take for such a spreading zone if you had starships that just traveled 10% of the speed of light and made planted colonies? And then they build up their civilization and then spread out and planted more colonies. It turns out you could fill the galaxy within 60 million years, which is an eye blink. It's nothing. Yeah. So the, the question of where is everybody and why aren't we uh, seeing them is made vastly worse if you allow any kind of interstellar travel. Right. Because then if they started anywhere, they should already be everywhere. That's right. And so the, the, uh, one of the things I talk about in my novel Existence is how when we get out to the asteroid belt or the Kuiper belt, we may find an entire civilization or perhaps they fought of, of various types of uh, space probes that were sent by previous cultures. And we'll probably be sending such self-replicating probes. But the other half of the question is, you know, how likely is it that at any of these spacing intervals, we're going to likely be able to detect others? And those calculations have been done. And, and um, it turns out we're at a borderline. The Earth itself would only be detectable to very super advanced aliens with huge antennas that they aim deliberately at us for a year. And then they might pick up I Love Lucy. So right now... And then they'd the probably ch change the channel. <laughs> yeah, right. the, barn door, the, the barn door excuse for Metty is, it's too late, they already know about us. But it turns out that is simply and scientifically wrong. Uh, the people who want to use these planetary radars to send focused beams out into space going, you who, they intend to change the current situation by yelling very, very loudly and very focusedly. So now the, the fear of that would be that uh, we attract the Borg. Is that basically it? And uh, before you know it, we're all serving overlords that uh, come here and... Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you, you can put it that way, and it's, it's easy to make fun of because uh, there are, there's so much questionable science fiction about, um, about aliens coming to invade us. And a lot of people think it's even, it's a silly thing to worry about. But uh, David Brin has, has written about this and he's, he's actually persuaded me that if you, if you use the preca precautionary principle, you have to ask, well, can we prove that it's not a threat? And are we certain that it's not? And are there some logical explanations for what we observe that might be consistent with dangerous aliens? And then if you admit that you can't prove that it's not some existential threat, then you have to say, okay, well then, what, on what basis do we decide that it's okay to risk the future of Earth's biosphere? I got you. <laughs> so, you uh, <laughs> it's a big risk. It, it turns out that, that um, there are mature ways to do this. Um, 20 years ago, the um, genetic engineering and genetic research communities uh, in biology hold a moratorium on genetic research and had a meeting at Asilomar, California, and came out with better practices, best practices that let us have our cake and eat it too. Let us have advances in genetic research while taking some very, very solid and mature precautions. Um, and the uh, NASA has a planetary protection office whose job it is to make sure that the space probes we land on other worlds have been sterilized as best we can, but not in a way that makes it so that we can't explore, but, but just as best we can. And of course, these precautions are done 10 times, 100 times as strongly mm -hmm. if we're going to be returning stuff you know, to Earth that might infect the Earth. So there are mature ways of doing this. Well, and from, from what and you most, say, though, uh, the, 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 it only takes one space herpy. That's all it takes is one space herpy 
to ruin everything, David. <laughs> and, and those face herpes, you know, the virus is the herpes. Yeah. They're, they're this big. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to mess with that. Yeah, nobody wants to put a salve on uh, the sore that shows up from that space herpes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we're, talk, we're talking about safe SETI here. Exactly. Safe Remember SETI. to practice safe SETI, folks. <laughs>